Hi, my name is Dr. Don Diard. I want to talk to you today about my concern for the use of laxatives, even natural laxatives. You know, the book is still out on whether laxative therapy actually even works or not, and we're just so darn good at taking care of the symptoms as opposed to addressing the cause of many health concerns. I mean, new research is showing that the actual cause of poor bowel function is actually in the liver and bile flow, something that we've talked about Ayurvedically for many, many, many years now, and now there's some pretty interesting science to sort of back that up. We know that good bile flow regulates the consistency of your school stool. Bile is like a Pac-Man that gobbles up toxins in your intestinal tract and takes those toxins to the toilet. The bile also buffers the acids for your stomach, and if your stomach knows that there's not enough bile flow down there, it's not going to make the acid. You're not going to digest wheat and dairy, which is what I talk about in my Eat Wheat book, and I talk about how to rebooting and resetting bile flow and bile function. Unfortunately, bile flow congestion and bile production congestion comes from a history of a diet of a lot of processed foods. I mean, processed foods include cooked oils, processed oils that make and extend shelf life, are basically undigestible. They increase the, the, the risk of metabolic syndrome by 141%. That means abdominal obesity, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, triglycerides, and, and, uh, and cholesterol. And they showed in the exact same study, we need a whole food diet, including whole grains like wheat, that have reduced the risk of those same concerns by 38%. So powerful, powerful understanding. That's one of the reasons why we have you know, this gallbladder, bile flow, poor upper digestion, and poor lower elimination issue in the first place. So we can, we can unravel that simply by avoiding those processed foods. Fiber is, a, is, a, is what we eat in, in our culture, and, and hunter-gatherers had 100 grams of fiber per day. Average American, 15. We don't need anywhere near the amount of fiber we were designed to eat. Fiber attaches to the bile and takes it to the toilet. So get more fiber in your diet. How do you do that? Well, beans are my favorite. Vegetables, fruits, all of them have fiber, but beans, beans, beans. If you took a look at the centenarian cultures, they have beans every single day. Beans, if you want to get at least 50 grams of fiber in your diet per day, you got to eat beans. That's just the only way you're going to pull it off. And there's two kinds of fiber. There's soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. So soluble fiber is the kind that actually breaks down when you digest it, like oatmeal becomes super slimy, right? And those are harvested in the fall for winter eating when it's very, very dry. So we get the slimy soluble fiber in the winter that helps escort the bile to the toilet. And in the spring, when it's a wet, muddy, congestive time of the year, we get fruits and leafy greens, which are loaded with what? Insoluble fiber that don't break down, sort of like roughage. And they also help us eliminate, but they get, they're better off in the summertime when we're trying to kind of push a lot of mucus out of the intestinal tract and scrub. But in the wintertime, we're trying to heal and repair in a very dry season with very wet fiber both of which are great for helping scrubbing and supporting the downward moving of elimination. Those two strategies work very well. One of my favorite probiotics, Bifidobacteria lactis, has been shown to support and increase the, the transit time, how quickly the food moves through your intestinal tract. So probiotics work really, really well as well, but you want to make sure that you're healing and repairing the environment so the natural probiotics can actually you know, become your permanent residence and you don't need a pill and a powder for the rest of your life. Now, laxative therapies have their issues. There's bulking laxatives like psyllium and, and even chia and metamucil and things like that, flax, will expand and attract a bunch of water. And when it expands into your intestinal tract, it makes your intestinal tract too big. It can distend it. And if it gets too distended, it can't contract. It loses its motility. But while it's doing that, you ever put psyllium in a glass of water, it just sucks up all the water. It does the exact same thing, pulls the water off your intestinal tract and you run the risk of sort of dehydrating your bowel. And that's not a good strategy. There are osmotic laxatives like milk of magnesia and magnesium, all of which work by pulling water off of the stool. And there's issues because again, you can once again dehydrate the bowel and that becomes a real issue. Some, some reports show they can take nutrients off the intestinal wall. Long-term use, not recommended. Again, really good at taking care of the symptoms. Maybe, you know, magnesium, you know, we, we need a certain amount of magnesium, but enough to actually make you have a looser stool means that you're actually overdosing on magnesium, actually, so you've got to be careful about that. The stool softeners that you get, like if you go to the doctor, I mean, the, the, you know, they have habit-forming side effects, and the problem with them is that 
you shouldn't be on them for longer than a week without doctor supervision. So we really don't want those for any length of time. And then you have the, the more common stimulating laxatives that you get uh, with a lot of the herbal laxatives like cascara sagrada and aloe and rhubarb and senna and prunes. They all irritate the intestinal tract. The intestinal tract goes, ouch, okay, I'll do it. And it starts to contract and you move your bowels. Well, and a little bit of that is okay. A coffee can be a similar way. If you drink a lot of coffee on an empty stomach, it can be a bowel irritant and make you go to the bathroom. Problem with that is over time, the intestinal skin becomes desensitized to those irritants, reacts by producing a bunch of protective mucus so the skin can't even feel it, and it creates the need for more of these stimulating laxatives and creates more and more of a dependency, and long-term use of that can be problematic. So bottom line is why don't we do things that help reboot function? Trifola, for example, an Ayurvedic herb that actually helps support the motility of the intestinal wall. But trifola also has been shown in studies to actually support liver function and bile flow. So you get the bile, which is the ultimate regulator of the school, not only according to Ayurveda, but according to the new science, which is kind of neat that they finally recognize that. And so you get that benefit um, along with uh, the tonifying of the bowel. Other bile movers that are so critically important that work with bile, like trifola, that work, uh, are like beets and apples. Uh, they're called cologogs, like rosemary and turmeric and fenugreek. All of these are natural bile movers, and I've written a ton about how to get the bile to move as well. When you take an herb like trifola, though, because it's an astringent, they're all fruits and they're sort of astringent, I like to slime it up with some slippery elm and some licorice. So we combine that together to get the benefit of the toning of the bowel, the increasing of the bile, but also some good fiber to make sure the bile gets to the toilet. That's I think is really important. We even add a little bit of tiny, tiny, tiny bit of psyllium in there because psyllium will attract water. And once the water hits the slippery elm and the licorice, it slimes it up and activates that to give you that slimy benefit. Definitely drink that with a lot of water as well. Very, very important. And then, of course, once you have the intestinal tract healed and repaired, you want to be thinking about you know, supporting the health of the microbiome and making sure you have repopulated good microbes in your gut, uh, gotten rid of some of the bad bugs and repopulate with the good bugs and make permanent residence so you don't need to take a probiotic for the rest of your life. And I've written about that in many of my uh, prior articles. And you can learn more about that by, uh, by uh, following some of the links from the article associated with this video on the, sort of the, the new scoop on laxative therapy and understanding how and when to do it and when not to do it and how to repair healthy bowel function on your own. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Dreyer. Hi, did you like this video? Do you like our content here at Life Spa? You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash John Dreyer right here and get this valuable content every week in your inbox. This recording is brought to you by Life Spa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at lifespa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.